Hi everyone, this is Margaret Manning with Boomerly. As boomers, we have lived great lives. We have had so much opportunity and it's just been, you know, such an incredible time to be on the planet. But as we get a little older, we do start to worry about our health and many of us have a fear of death. This is perfectly natural as we you know, question um, you know, what the purpose of our life has been, what the meaning of our life has been, and you know, to just you know, be a little bit concerned about what's next. And I think that we've got so many years ahead of us because of the wonders of technology and great healthcare that getting to grips with this fear of death is really important to get the most out of life in your 50s and 60s and, and beyond. So I think the first thing to do is to take control of your life and to be doing the things right now that you really, really love, you know, that are important to you, and to eliminate from your life the things that are making you unhappy or making you sad. And that actually does involve things like a job. If it's not making you happy, then you have to let it go and find another way to live your life, you know, to be happy, joyful. If you're with people um, or in a relationship that isn't bringing you joy and, and happiness, then it is really time to make some changes. Uh, if you are in a home that's too big, your children have left home and maybe you, you want to have a little bit more time and place to yourself, it's time to sell the house and downsize, move to a smaller place. These are things you can do and I think that the fear of death is often related to a fear of not living life fully. And if you're doing things that aren't making you happy, then you're not living your life fully. So it's time to let them go. The second thing I think for coming to, to, to grips with, with the fear of death is to understand how, how it fits in the, in the natural cycle of things. You know, I love the spring. Every time I go out for a walk in the spring and see the little buds and the trees coming back to life, I just get such a beautiful sense of you know, the cycle of, of life and the resilience of nature and you know, just that feeling that um, you know, there's, just a, there's a purpose in, a, in, a, in the cycle of life that, that we are connected to as human beings. And it is just our, the nature of things that we have a, don't have forever. We have a limited time. But like, you know, like the flowers in, in spring, we can actually regenerate ourselves you know, an endless number of times, but to see ourselves in that perspective. Another is to, to read, you know, read literature, read uh, research, and, and, and how other people have come to grips with, with, this, with their fear of death, um, you know, how they've been inspired, um, how situations in their life have changed their way of thinking about it. And I think that's really important to share the common human experience with other people, and that helps a lot. The other thing is to actually establish um, some rituals that give you a deeper sense of, of meaning in your life. So for example, I mean, it could be a spiritual ritual. It could be something that you do as part of a, of a, of a, of a faith, but it could also be a ritual um, with your family, with your friends, that just gives you that sense of continuity and, you know, and meaning, that, that there's a meaning in this, in this existence of yours. So having ritual um, is, is, I think, very, very important. A final thing which I think can really help with the fear of death is to get organized and to plan your passing. And this has actually become um, much more of a topic of conversation in the last few years. There are a couple of groups that I'm aware of that um, actually provide some templates that you can fill in um, and start a conversation with your family and your friends. You know, what you might want your, your funeral to be like, what, where you might want to be buried or how. Um, there's one, for example, called uh, Death Over Dinner. <laughs> I know it sounds a bit odd, but it's actually you know, it's a, uh, an opportunity to get all your friends in a non-threatening way into a room, have dinner, talk about death, <laughs> talk about what your preferences might be, and you know, just share, share the conversation. And the other one is called Death Cafe, same, same kind of idea. And I think it's great you know, to be bringing these um, uh, ways to communicate with your family and friends into a more natural, you know, organic conversation, the better. So those are some ideas. Also, there are some really cool um, ways to be buried. <laughs> it sounds odd, but anyway. Um, there's one called, I think it's Evergreen. It's, it's where you can actually have your ashes planted in a tree or in the roots of a tree, and then your family or friends can plant the tree and that can become you know, a memory for you, a place to go. 
And of course, there's the famous um, creative solutions, like I remember uh, Joanna Lumley saying uh, she wanted to get buried in a cardboard box, um, you know, covered with feathers and paints and, and pictures. And I think that's kind of one of my favorites, but you know, that your death becomes a celebration of your life and that that's known in advance. Oh, and one final, final thing is to get your, um, your digital assets in order. Uh, right now, there isn't a very um, consistent uh, strategy for the online groups that you might belong to, you know, Facebook, uh, Twitter, or even your email accounts. Um, different companies have different strategies, and they're finally beginning to see that people want to talk about it, that it's something that people want to plan. And so I think in the next few years, um, the Facebooks of the world and Microsoft and Yahoo will all um, have a consistent um, policy. But right now they don't. So just make sure that you know who do you want to um, have control of your digital assets when you die. Do you want uh, your family and friends or your family to have access to your email? Um, there's lots of reasons you might not want them to, or you might you know, have all of your financial information in that place. So anyway, just, just to let people know what you want done with your digital um, properties after you die. So I think if you look at those six things, there are very positive ways to look at the fear of death. And I hope that that's helped you. I hope that's given you some things to think about. And I'd love to invite you to go to the website, um, read the article, all this is outlined there. And um, let's just start a conversation about it. Let's see what you, um, what's on your mind and whether we can help each other. I think it's really important to get this out in the open. And, uh, but you know, the most important thing is just to have fun in your life celebrate life and enjoy your friends, your family, you know, where we are, all, everything that's uh, going well in your life and, you know, your vision for the future. Hope that everyone's well. Have a fantastic day. Thanks so much.